Hello service people, Enrico here. In this video, I want to explain you and walk you through on how to design a full serverless webhook with AWS Lambda, SQS, Event Bridge, and also DemoDB. Let's get started and answer a simple question first. What is a webhook and which characteristics should have in order to be scalable and fully functional? So let's explore what actually the third-party services that give you the webhook endpoint want from your webhook. So the third-party apps usually want the webhook endpoints to be available, first of all. They don't want to find, you know, the webhook not available or private. They want the webhook to respond fast and acknowledge the notification, usually with a 200 HTTP response. So in order to do that, we should, like, um, keep in mind a few concepts. The first one, I think, is the most important one, is the separation of concerns. First thing is that the webhook says, like, um, needs to... Uh, separate two different tasks. The first one is acknowledge the messages. So be sure that the request is authenticated, vali valid, and also passing the request. And then the other one is processing the request. So meaning calling the internal process or calling a third party service again, or like a notification service in your app. This task should be done separately. Meaning that once you receive the message on your webhook, you should return the 200 response as quickly as possible. And then you give the message to one of your service that's gonna handle the actual process of the message and what we what your application is actually gonna do with the message. But the important thing is that the third party service doesn't have to wait for your webhook to complete the request. The third party service only wants to receive the acknowledged message with the 200 response, okay. Second point, which is very linked, let's say, to the first one, is you need like a monitoring service because you don't want to receive an excessive amount, you know, of requests in your webhook or like malicious requests on your endpoints. It's gonna be uh, a public endpoint. It's true that some uh, third-party services has like authentication in place for your webhook, but you want a way to have a monitoring um, service in order to be able to see if there is, you know, like a wrong configuration on the on the webhook itself or if there is like a malicious attack. The third point is actually trying to decouple these requests on the webhook. So we, we said on the first point that it's true that we have to, you know, separate the acknowledged message and the processing messages. And in order to do that, we need to decouple the requests, meaning that it's usually very good practice to once we receive the notification on our webhook, we can just send the message to other couple service, which can be basically a queue using SQS. And then the SQS will send the message to our consumer, which can be, I don't know, Lambda function, can be any other AWS services or another HTTP endpoint. But the important thing is to decouple the, the service between the uh, request and the actual process. And then lastly, it has to be cost optimized since we can receive webhooks for like uh, loads of requests. So we can actually think about a way to uh, maybe add filters. So based on the webhook that we receive, maybe you want to skip some notification, maybe you want to just lock some of them, but it's important to be sure to have like a cost optimized webhook because with a webhook, you can, you know, increase very quickly the amount of requests you're going to receive and also the cost. Let's now explain the architecture that I created with the uh, AWS services. So the first design is the um, API gateway with the SQS service. So the idea here is that we don't need any more like directly a Lambda function uh, attached to the API gateway because now you can add as the backend uh, other services such as SQS, and many other. For our use case, we use SQS, so we can decouple the um, API gateway with the uh, Lambda function as the consumer. So the first step is we create the API gateway. We can also decide to attach an authorizer. If you want to check, you know, API key or headers, you can run your custom authorizer logic here in this Lambda function. And if you want, you can also add the uh, CloudWatch logs in order to be sure that the number of requests that you receive are legitimate for your use case. Then we push the messages into an SQS queue, who is attached, which is attached to an AWS Lambda function. The Lambda function will basically process your message and send back 
Direct3D 200K um, HTTP response to the API gateway so we can he can notify the third party service that the webhook has been received. Then the Lambda function, depending on a use case, can call, I don't know, an SNS topic or you can save the record in a DynamoDB or a RDS database. It really depends on what you have to do with the uh, webhook notification. You, you, I also added in the um, graph the DLQ, so dead letter Q, in order to ha handle errors if the Lambda function is not able to process the message or if the Lambda function basically throw any errors, we want to be able to catch them into a queue. This is like the first architecture we can uh, build with using like, you know, a scalable webhook, uh, fully serverless. And the other idea that I had is another design, which basically changed only the SQS with uh, an event bridge uh, hook. So the idea here is that we push the messages from the API gateway to an event bridge. And then based on the filter that we put on the event bridge, we will have different Lambda functions they are gonna like listen to these messages. The idea here is that based on the um, rules that we put on the event bridge, maybe we, ha we have a Lambda function sending notification or for uh, other messages, we have a Lambda function saving the records or saving the logs somewhere like DynamoDB or you know any other service that you want to use um, to save your logs. And here really, uh, the only thing that I changed the e event bridge and I think I like more this design because it gives you, you know, more, uh, it's more scalable if you want to add different rules, different services, listening for the event bridge, whereas on the other, on the other case, you have uh, a queue service that you need to attach to a Lambda function. So this is my idea of how you can design a scalable webhook with serverless services. Let me know if you have, you know, any questions, if you, have, if you have like any improvements you want to add in this design. I will also attach like a serverless YAM file with this stack in order to be uh, ready to be deployed if you want to test it if, or if you want to integrate it in your service. As always, thanks for watching the video. Feel free to ask any questions on the comments. I will try to answer you all.